the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Sunday, March 13th, 2022, and this is the Sports Vote Campaign Update. A new season and a new name. Season 4, Episode 11. So a few um, amendments to last uh, podcast two weeks ago. The criminal and the civil justice system are rotten to the core. On the criminal side, prisons for profit. Think about the incentives that creates. What is the customer for a prison? Prisoners. What do you need to have prisoners? You need to have laws that make more prisoners. So just roll that around in your head a bit. War, uh, on the concept of why wars happen, uh, it brings to mind something that Gary Halbert taught me more than 20 years ago. Never underestimate the other person's need or greed. So uh, it can also be a function of greed, not need, that causes wars to happen. But once again, um, the development of an ecosystem around sports investing will create a lot of prosperity and enough that the even the excessively greedy folks will get their fill. So does the Bible mention anything about gambling? I have a link in the um, outline, which there's a link in the show notes to the outline, the raw outline that I developed these podcasts from. Read the last paragraph. Um, The SEC filed uh, an update. These are monthly, uh, just indicating that we're still moving through the settlement uh, negotiations and that they believe it will result in a positive outcome. You can see the court filing under item number four in the outline. Uh, Spam and scam emails are so bad, the flood of them is coming in at such a rate that I actually had to change my um, filtering system. That's generally an economic indicator, a negative one. So the uh, MLB just a couple days ago uh, reached an agreement to start the season a little bit late. I just like to point out that even if this didn't happen, um, the fact that there are no games doesn't stop ASM from trading. It trades whether or not games are played or not. Do not underestimate the importance of this element. Even in a war, uh, you know, in a war, the um, teams in a country would still trade. So this is a this is not a small point. So my. Um, the UCC1 lien was uh, filed by the SBA, you know, officially recorded on the 28th of February, you know, the end of last month. You can uh, look it up. The file number's there. Why am I mentioning this? Any attempt over the next 30 years or sooner, if I pay this loan off before then, any attempt to uh, attach to any assets or anything that I may have, which is not much of anything, but if that were to happen, I would simply um, alert the SBA that there was a uh, um, someone trying to violate their lien, and then you'd have to deal with them and not me. So uh, you'd be dealing with the U.S. government's lawyers and the Small Business Administration and uh, not me <laughs> as an individual without a lawyer. So good luck with that. So Mattress Mac, um, Texas doesn't have legal legal sports uh, gambling. So where did he place that $10 million bet? So on top, of, on top of advertising himself and something that's very bad for the public and uh, losing $10 million and trying to spin that as an exciting event, um, he placed the bet illegally. So are you encouraging people to break the law also? That's, uh, that's not a hero story, folks. That's not a hero story. Um, all right, so it looks like the, um, the story, uh, there was a story on the street.com, this is under item number nine in the outline, that the um, Vegas casinos could have a corruption problem because of gambling, <laughs> sports gambling, uh, game ma- uh, match uh, fixing and 
point shaving and all that sort of good stuff that always guaranteed to happen when you promote gambling. Um, this is only the beginning, and uh, gambling doesn't uh, cause corruption. Gambling is corruption. Gambling is corruption, not causes. There's no way around it. Uh, we are aware that some of the uh, statistics on the homepage are not uh, updating. We're still experiencing occasional order crossing delays. Please only, uh, the, so there's two points there. One, yes, we're aware of the statistics. Um, and then two, the order crossing is delayed from time to time, although I haven't seen it in the last probably week or so, about a week. Um, we are aware of it. There's some uh, issue in the back end. Uh, it runs on Azure platform, and we're having to debug what it is. Something changed. But the orders are queued up, so don't enter them more than once. Once the delay uh, abates, the order will be crossed. The problem is a bit evasive, but we're working on it. Um, regarding inflation, um, the official number is about 7%, but it's uh, much higher than that. Look at housing. Uh, that's really the leading indicator for uh, inflation. I would say real inflation is probably uh, 15%. Somewhere in that range, um, housing is a little overheated. Um, you know, it's I think it ran close to twenty percent um, in the last year, so I wouldn't put it up that high. I would say it's closer to fifteen, but it's very high, and there's really no way around it because um, because of all the massive money printing that went on to uh, keep people reasonably stable during the um, turn down that resulted from coronavirus. So there's no real production to eat, sop up all this uh, inflation, so it's going to be a problem. There's no easy fix here. And then Biden signed an executive order on crypto, which looks like a big bunch of word salad at this point. I don't, um, I don't see anything real coming out of this just yet, but it's at least a step in the direction toward it looks like a, um, a digital dollar, which I mentioned many years ago. That they actually should do and should have done if they wanted to stop this craziness before it got to this point. They should have done it a long time ago. But the government is notoriously slow and behind the curve on these things. But um, I don't place a whole lot of stake in this. Um, you know, a whole lot of importance on this particular thing other than just at least it's on the radar. DraftKings is trading in the mid to high teens at this point, and apparently their frustrated CEO said that if you sell their stock, it'll be the worst decision you've made in your entire life. That's pretty ridiculous on the face. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there are people already that are happy they sold this a long time ago, but um, that's a desperation kind of a statement. The uh, The fact that this thing is not making any money and it can't, there's no way out of it. I've said this for years. The offshore guys have more experience. They have better pricing. They have no taxes and no reporting. And there's the wire act trap. If you enforce it, you have to shut everybody down, onshore and offshore. And if you don't enforce it, the offshore guys are going to have a permanent advantage. This is actually something that we talked about more than 20 years ago in Costa Rica when we were contemplating the day when it would become legal here. And that was the talking point is basically what's happening right now. Um, then you have experienced guys like MGM who can tie to their physical properties and other perks to keep their customers. You know, they can afford to cross over their marketing costs into other parts of their businesses. Online guys don't have this. So once they st stop spending on marketing, which basically right now is giving away money by the truckloads, their users are going to flee. Gamblers are not uh, loyal, and they're going to, and, and boy, do we know that just from people inside ASM that have done certain things, um, <clears throat> they'll bonus jump for an extra penny. So uh, there's no case here. There's no case for a buyout other than maybe some kind of an emotional play, but I wouldn't be a buyer at any price even if I love gambling more than life itself. They're not going to last two more years at this burn rate, and raising capital is going to get harder and harder as these negative numbers, ratings, downgrades, and negative media coverage continue. It's like catching a falling life. 1.5 million paying customers, they claim. Yeah, paying them out. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're, they've got 1.5 million customers they're paying. That's 
Is that is that's a wasting asset? Is that something that you want to invest in? If I were the other operators, I would just simply um, wait for them to collapse and steal their customers. Your marketing spend um, to capture their their uh, customers once they're gone is going to be far less because you can just incorporate it into your existing campaigns. Something like uh, you know if you're if you're a DraftKings customer, come over here, or you work DraftKings customer, come over here, and we'll give you XX bonus whatever or so many nights free you know a night free in one of our hotels etc that's a lot cheaper than buying um, a wasting asset basically a customer list that's all you're going to end up with and uh, a lot of lawsuits and overhead regulatory overhang and all this uh, this uh, these legal claims that go back to the way they form this thing including uh the short seller report from Hindenburg and has been a couple of other events of that magnitude. They're still there. So you're going to inherit that if you take that on. So and then finally, um, the opening day, Major, Major League Baseball day one uh, is loaded up. We are aware of the Cleveland uh, team baseball name, you know, the change of the name. And that's been sent to tech for cha- to be changed, changed out. Could be a little while, but uh, it'll be done. So that's it, a short one for today. Thank you very much for your time. And as always, um, look in the show notes for resources, including the link to this uh, outline that I've referenced that has some links you may want to look at. Thank you and have a great day.